there was no switch for gravity. There is no way to turn gravity off. Floating around in space might sound like fun, but for astronauts, it's a nightmare for their bodies. Muscles waste away, blood shifts dangerously, and bones start to weaken. Long space missions, like trips to Mars, make this even worse, leaving astronauts weak and barely able to walk upon arrival. The solution? Artificial gravity. But can we actually create it? Why zero gravity becomes a death sentence? Most people think weightlessness sounds like the ultimate fun experience. You could float around, do flips in midair, and use every corner of your spacecraft since there's no up or down. This novelty wears off quickly when you realize your body is literally eating itself alive. When astronauts orbit Earth, they aren't actually escaping gravity. Earth is still pulling on them just as hard as it pulls on you right now. The difference is they're moving sideways at 17,000 miles per hour, essentially falling around the planet instead of into it. This creates what scientists call microgravity, and it wreaks absolute havoc on human biology in ways that would shock most people. Your blood, which normally pools in your legs thanks to gravity, suddenly has nowhere to go. It floods your upper body, causing your face to puff up and creating dangerous pressure in your head. Your circulatory system, perfectly designed for pumping blood upward against gravity's pull, now works overtime and causes vision problems and serious circulation issues that can last for months. The real damage happens to your muscles and bones in a process that's both fascinating and terrifying. Right now, as you sit reading this, hundreds of muscles are working against gravity to keep you upright. Take that constant resistance away and your body starts consuming itself. Astronaut Scott Kelly experienced months of dizziness, joint pain, and trouble walking after spending a year in space. Now imagine a Mars mission where astronauts spend nine months getting there, work on Mars with only 38% Earth gravity for three months, then endure another nine-month journey home. By the time they return, they would be physical wrecks barely able to function, the acceleration dream that can't work. Scientists have identified two main ways to create artificial gravity in space, though only one is remotely practical with current technology. The first approach sounds brilliant in theory. If you fire rocket engines continuously to accelerate your spacecraft at 1G, the same force as Earth's gravity, everyone inside gets pressed against the back wall, just like real gravity. Thanks to Einstein's equivalence principle, this acceleration feels identical to the gravity you experience right now. This method has incredible theoretical potential that borders on science fiction. A ship that could maintain 1G acceleration could reach nearby stars easily and span the entire Milky Way galaxy in just 12 years of ship time, though over 100,000 years would pass on Earth. The crew would arrive healthy and ready to explore, having lived in comfortable Earth-like conditions throughout their journey. It sounds perfect until you run the numbers on fuel requirements. Even with perfect matter-to-energy conversion using antimatter, you would need 62 metric tons of fuel for every kilogram of spacecraft mass just to reach the center of our galaxy. The SpaceX Starship, weighing 120,000 kilograms empty, would require over 7 billion kilograms of perfect fuel for such a trip. Current chemical rockets burn for only minutes at a time, and even advanced ion drives produce tiny amounts of thrust nowhere near 1G of acceleration. The fuel requirements make this approach completely impossible with any technology we can realistically develop in the foreseeable future. The spinning solution that actually works. The second approach to artificial gravity is much more achievable and represents our only real path forward. Instead of accelerating in a straight line, you spin the spacecraft like a giant wheel. When you rotate a cylinder or wheel-shaped habitat, centrifugal force pushes everything outward toward the outer wall simulating gravity. This is the principle behind every serious artificial gravity proposal, from massive O'Neill cylinders to smaller rotating space stations. Physicist Gerard O'Neill proposed enormous cylinders 20 miles long and 4 miles wide, spinning 28 times per hour to create Earth-like gravity. Even at this massive scale, the artificial gravity wouldn't feel quite right. Turn your head quickly and the fluid in your ears would slosh differently than normal, potentially causing nausea and balance problems. Throw a ball straight up and it would curve sideways due to the Coriolis effect, the same phenomenon that makes hurricanes spin. 
Smaller rotating structures have even worse problems that make them barely tolerable. The gravity at your feet would be noticeably different from the gravity at your head, making you feel like your head is a balloon tied to a concrete block. The smaller the radius, the worse these effects become. Any structure we could realistically build with current technology would have significant side effects that crews would need to adapt to over time. Zero gravity versus spin gravity. When comparing rotating artificial gravity stations to traditional zero gravity spacecraft, the trade-offs become crystal clear through careful analysis of crew health and mission requirements. This comparison isn't just academic. It could determine whether humans can successfully colonize Mars and explore the outer solar system. Zero gravity stations offer massive advantages in terms of construction and operation that make them attractive for short missions. They're much simpler to build since they don't require complex rotating mechanisms that could fail catastrophically. Every cubic meter of space can be used efficiently since crew members can work on walls and ceilings. Docking with other spacecraft remains straightforward and construction costs stay relatively low compared to rotating alternatives. For missions lasting a few weeks or months, zero gravity stations make perfect sense. However, zero gravity stations become torture chambers on long missions where crew health becomes the primary concern. The human body simply wasn't designed to function without gravity's constant pull. Crew members experience constant motion sickness, muscle deterioration, bone loss, and circulation problems that worsen dramatically over time. By the time astronauts reach Mars after a nine-month journey in zero gravity, they would be in no condition to perform the demanding physical work of planetary exploration. They would need weeks or months of recovery time that Mars missions simply cannot afford. Rotating artificial gravity stations solve the fundamental health problems, but introduce serious engineering complexity that drives up costs and risks. These structures require sophisticated rotation systems, gyroscopic stability controls, and robust mechanical components that could fail with catastrophic consequences. They're significantly more expensive to build and require larger crews to maintain properly. Docking becomes complicated since you need to match the rotation or dock at the central hub where there's no artificial gravity. Despite these substantial challenges, rotating stations become absolutely essential for any mission longer than six months. The crew arrives at their destination healthy, alert, and ready to work immediately without any recovery period. They can eat, drink, and sleep normally throughout the journey, maintaining both physical and psychological health. For missions to Mars or beyond, this isn't just convenient. It's the difference between mission success and complete failure. Current reality check and development status. Right now, most artificial gravity projects exist mainly in computer simulations, concept art, and crowdfunding campaigns rather than actual hardware development. NASA has proposed designs like the Nautilus X, a rotating habitat that could serve as a way station for Mars missions. The Gateway Foundation has ambitious plans for rotating space hotels and eventually a large spaceport with different gravity zones. But these remain far future concepts supported mainly by slick promotional videos. Some creative SpaceX enthusiasts have proposed innovative solutions like tethering multiple starships together and spinning them to create artificial gravity. The math actually works out. A 100 meter radius could provide one G at three rotations per minute, but this isn't an official SpaceX project and would add significant complexity and potential failure points to an already challenging mission architecture. Jeff Bezos, who studied under O'Neill cylinder inventor Gerard O'Neill, has talked about using Blue Origin to build rotating structures in space but these remain aspirational goals measured in decades rather than years. The most realistic near-term approach might involve smaller rotating sections within larger spacecraft where crew could spend several hours daily to maintain their health while living mostly in zero gravity. This hybrid approach could provide health benefits without requiring massive rotating structures. Science fiction, dream of gravity control. What if we could just flip a switch and turn gravity on and off like a light? While this sounds completely impossible, some fascinating research is pushing the boundaries of what we thought we knew about gravity itself. Actually, manipulating gravity would solve far more than just the weightlessness problem. It would revolutionize transportation, energy production, and our entire understanding of physics. Scientists have successfully levitated small objects, including living frogs and mice, 
using powerful electromagnetic fields. Belgian physicist André Fufa has proposed methods for warping spacetime using electromagnetism, though the effects would be incredibly small and remain completely untested in practice. The biggest mystery involves antimatter and how it interacts with gravity. We know how regular matter behaves in gravitational fields, but we've never actually tested whether antimatter particles fall up or down. CERN's Alpha-G experiment is designed to answer this fundamental question by precisely measuring how antimatter behaves in Earth's gravitational field. If antimatter has anti-gravity properties, it could completely revolutionize our understanding of physics and potentially lead to controllable gravity technology. All the fundamental forces except gravity have known carrier particles that we can potentially manipulate. Gravity's theoretical carrier, the graviton, remains so weak that no conceivable detector could find it. But if we discovered how to manipulate gravitons the way we manipulate photons with electrical currents, we could theoretically turn gravity on and off at will. This remains purely theoretical, but the implications would be staggering. So can we really have artificial gravity in space? Absolutely yes, but not easily, not cheaply, and not without significant compromises. Rotational artificial gravity is achievable with current technology, though it requires large, complex structures and comes with side effects that crews would need to adapt to over time. For anything beyond short missions to the moon, it's not just helpful, but essential for crew health and mission success.